pre-seminar uh, remote training on the Corsair Central Register, the CCR, for the Middle East region. My name is Jane Hoopy and I am the director in charge of the environmental protection in ICAO. And I will be providing you with an overview of the seminar. You uh, all remember that we have a few uh, regional seminars face-to-face uh, -face that were scheduled this, uh, this year. And uh, due to the uh, COVID crisis, we have um, to postpone those seminars to later uh, this year. We still do not have uh, the exact date for the regional seminars. They still are going to be defined and we will announce them back uh, to you. Um, so that in, in, in a way that you could all as focal points be ready uh, for undertaking uh, some of the steps that you have to, to take now on course here. We have uh, planned this uh, three-hour training sessions uh, on the course central registry. Um, they, uh, it's a, also this, in the same way we were doing the face-to-face. -face. They are a series of uh, uh, webinars, but um, they do not uh, replace the 2020 uh, regional course seminars. In fact, what we are doing is those to, to undertake those seminars in a way that you, you can be um, somehow familiarized to, to the CCR, but it, you still are going to, to, to receive the face-to-face the -face, um, uh, training later this year. Next. So, um, from the 1st of January uh, in 2019, all operators that were conducting international flights were required to monitor their CO2 emissions from the international flights. Um, the operators, they had to um, compile that information in the corresponding annual emissions reports. And that information that the operators were producing, that had to be verified for uh, by a third party verifications. So um, at the point that an operator had their emissions monitoring plan established with their uh, state, that they start collecting this information beginning 2019, that they have done their plan and they have verified that plan. Um, the, the dates that were established by the, the course standards was that by 31st of May, 2020, operators will be uh, submitting that information on the reporting to states and states would start the verification of all that information. At the same time, once states have finalized verifying that information, they would be complying, compiling this information from all their operators. So the aggregated emissions data per state uh, pair um, would be then submitted to ICAO through the central registry by 31st August 2020. Um, you all remember that um, the Corsa baseline is an average of 2019 and 2020 emissions. So this um, uh, yearly submission 2019, um, uh, 2020 uh, was very important for us to finalize um, the um, uh, baseline. So uh, it, the objective of this uh, seminar is to provide information for you on the use and main functionalities of the CCR. That's initial information, but that, that's going to facilitate 
that when, when you have the face-to-face -face training during the seminars, when they happen this year, you are ready and you already understand the CCR and you, you have been um, familiarized with the CCR. So we understand that the training can be um, very effective by the time we get to the face-to-face. -face. There will be four focus areas during the training today. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you an introduction to the CCR. Um, you have then uh, a time to familiarize yourself with the CCR web interface. Then we'll go step by step on how to upload the CO2 emissions into the CCR. And then um, uh, the last step will be how you, as a focal point in your state, will be submitting the CO2 emissions to IK. Next slide, please. So what we'll have is um, around three hour sessions. Uh, uh, this, uh, the full time of the session today will be three hours, but we will um, make it in a two segment and we'll have a little break in the middle so that you can stretch your legs and breathe a little bit. Um, so the first segment we um, have uh, organized uh, as follows. I'm providing you this welcome and the objectives of the seminar. Then you have an introduction to the CCR, CCR itself. Um, we'll have a little time for you to do questions and answers. Then you have a demo of the, the central registry. Then you will be seeing the central uh, registry in front of you during the training itself. Um, you will have time to get familiar with the CCR. Then you will have, uh, again, time uh, for question and answers. And then we will um, have a little break. We will go then to the second segment of the, the webinar. You will learn how to report CO2 emissions. We will do with you an in-class exercise. You will be then doing yourself, you know, working with the 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 tool yourself, then you still have time for a question and answers. Then we'll have this memo on how you do a service request and again, a question and answers. And then we will be closing. Um, you um, have a training version of the CCR uh, as a, 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 a state focal point and it's, it's your state's account for the training, okay? Next time. So um, we uh, we will um, make sure that you have all the documentation that you need for the the, the CCR uh, training. You have received a lot of inf general information on the course here, yeah? um, but you have seen. Uh, in your email prior to that uh, webinar that we have also prepared very, very um, easy to follow uh, leaflets specifically on the CCR. So you have now four more leaflets uh, on the CCR that you can consult um, as a, uh, while you're working with um, uh, uploading your uh, reports on the central registry. It's, um, we, we are using this webinars as a, an official a tool for uh, uh, ICAO in a, there's not a long time, uh, but it has been very useful. And yesterday we also have done this webinar with the, the North America, Central America, and South American uh, regions uh, of ICAO. And we uh, have also done another uh, webinar with other groups. It has been very successful. Uh, but if you have any difficulties, there is a, a little chat mode that you, you can use. Um, 
is on the top of your screen. Uh, and um, if if you have any any need to ask a question or something, please let me know. Uh, we will be following all the time, and the intent here is really to make sure that our states, even during this uh, time of the the outbreak, are receiving all the support they need to um, uh, prepare themselves for the implementation of CORSEN. You have been doing a tremendous job to, to that time, and we are here to continue to support you. With that note, um, I wish you an amazing training, and um, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, this new tool. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, uh, for opening this uh, pre-seminar for today. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jiyun Zhang, and I'm an Associate Environment Officer at ICAO Secretariat uh, working on Corsia. For the coming an hour and 20-something minutes, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction to the Corsia Central Registry, as uh, Jane mentioned, and uh, we'll walk you through the main features of the CCR. In addition, we'll get to, uh, you will get to taste uh, the CCR and its main features to better uh, prepare yourself to report relevant information and communicate with ICAO through uh, CCR. Um, as Jane mentioned earlier, um, if you have any questions, uh, difficulties, uh, um, please contact us through the chat function. Um, uh, organizers will be watching it um, 24 seven. So uh, please uh, leave any sort of errors that you uh, or issues that you you face. Um, also, before I start, um, you should have received an email message uh, from Toronto uh, with links to set password to access the CCR. I believe this was sent uh, during the weekend, um, about two days ago. If you have already followed the instructions from Toronto and set your account, please check if you can log into the system properly because you, uh, you will get to sort of use a CCR on your own, it's important for you to have the access to CCR. Also, if you haven't set the password yet, uh, please go to Toronto, this website, uh, uh, corsia.toronto.com and um, check, uh, click forgot password in the main page and enter your official email address um, that is known to ICAO to reset the password. Um, if you have any issues resetting the password, please contact organizers immediately through the chat function again, um, on, um, so organizers can support you uh, accordingly. Um, I will try to address questions uh, if they are relevant during our present uh, during my presentation. But if not, um, as Jane has uh, mentioned, there are you know uh, numerous times for you to to ask any questions. Please uh, familiarize yourself with the chat and, and uh, ask any questions or comments you may have. So let's begin. Um, so I'll first provide you with a brief overview of the background information on the CCR and, uh, and then walk you through the functionalities. So um, the background sort of information on how ICAO or uh, what's um, ICAO's mandate on the development and oper operationalization of CCR. Um, at the 39th Assembly, when the Corsia was adopted, the Assembly instructed the ICAO Council to establish a consolidated Corsia Central Registry, CCR, for operationalization in order to facilitate reporting between ICAO and states. This was further translated into Annex 16, Volume 4, which listed Corsia Central Registry as one of the five implementation elements of Corsia. Furthermore, in the last assembly, um, ICAO member states have requested the Council to establish the CCR by early 2020 to enable the reporting of relevant information from states to ICAO. Um, I know this can be very sort of wordy um, sort of slide and, and it may not uh, seem straight uh, forward to you. So let me briefly explain to you how the CCR sh should work in a more like high level in a in a graphical um, representation. So um, let us like how um, look at how information should flow or you know flows between stakeholders in the context of Corsia. 
you may already have seen this diagram that I'm gonna show you um, in the Corsia leaflet that was briefly sort of presented by Jane um, in her presentation. There are like 10 uh, Corsia leaflets that has been uh, circulated to you in various, um, various regional seminars and whatnot. Um, and it's also available on the website. So if you are already familiar with it, um, it's uh, this picture that I'm gonna show you is already uh, available in the leaflet number six. Um, but, um, but still, uh, I'm pretty sure there will be, uh, you know, sort of going um, through this, the same information again and again, gives you another sort of like set of insights. So um, let's begin. So there are three main stakeholders related to CCR. First, we have airplane operators that operate international flights. Then there are state authorities or CAAs uh, here in this diagram. And then there's ICAO. So let's focus on the CO2 emissions information and the canceled emissions and units and, and see what role CCR plays in this context. So as you know, airplane operators um, uh, will report verified emissions to the state. For this year, uh, the, the deadline is by the end of this May. Um, the state authority then collect the information from all operators um, attributed to, their, the, to the state, aggregate the CO2 emissions, and submits to ICAO. Then ICAO processes this information from all states, all 193 states, and uh, aggregate the CO2 emissions and publish um, aggregate data to the ICAO website. In addition, ICAO calculates the sector's growth factor and, and, and should report back to the states and also make it available online, um, this result on the ICAO website. Then um, states will uh, use a sector's growth factor to calculate the offsetting requirement for each airplane operator that is attributed to the state. Based on this offsetting requirement, each operator purchases, should purchase uh, and cancel emission units to meet its offsetting requirement and uh, report it back to the state. State will then again consolidate all the requirement, uh, all the data and um, aggregate the information on this canceled emission units and then submit back to ICAO. ICAO will then aggregate the reported uh, information and publishes on the ICAO website. So you see that there are like various different uh, different levels of information um, and then different parties uh, uh, or stakeholders involved. It's not uh, shown here, but there's verification bodies as well. So um, it's really important, like it's it's uh, the, the varying sort of aggregation um, levels and complexity makes it difficult to, you know, uh, for the information to flow. And that's why the CCR is very important and um, ha has a very important role in this um, in this situation. And, and it's exactly why the CCR was established to facilitate the reporting between state and ICAO. Um, so CCR, uh, Corsia Central Registry is sort of, you know, a, a interface or, uh, or uh, interface between these state ICAO um, uh, that facilitates the reporting. Um, but please note that CCR is not to facilitate the reporting between state and uh, the uh, airplane operators um, attributed to the state as shown in this diagram. The CCR is designed to facilitate the reporting between the state and ICAO um, and to facilitate ICAO to, uh, to to aggregate the old information and then um, and then calculate and and publish it on on the web. So again, uh, this is just an example of how um, CCR sort of facilitates the reporting between state and ICAO um, in the example of CO2 emissions and canceled of, um, emission units. But um, there are different sort of reporting areas that has to be reported uh, from state to ICAO. So what are those reporting areas? That's, um, that's what we will cover in the following slide. So in this table, I'm pretty sure you have seen something sort of similar to this in the Corsia briefing um, leaflet, um, but let's sort of dig in uh, further. So in this table, different shading indicates a different phases of Corsia. So you see, um, 
the white here is uh, representing baseline. The, the uh, light gray here um, represents pilot phase, and then light blue represents first phase, and then darker blue for, uh, represents second phase. So the, the color scheme here sort of shows different um, phases of Corsia. And then on the left-hand side of the table, airplane operators, verification bodies, um, CO2 emissions, Corsia eligible fuels, and canceled emission units are the areas um, that, are, uh, that are to be reported by states to ICAO. So course, sort of like five uh, Corsia rele relevant information and data to be reported um, by state to ICAO according to Annex 16, Volume 4. Um, however, information for these five reporting areas for a given year is, will not be submitted at the same time as you can see from here. Um, for example, if you, um, if you, um, okay. Oh yeah, um, so for example, for you to report year 2021, um, the information on airplane operators and verification bodies will be submitted in a 2020, uh, to be exact, by 30th of November 2020, whereas data on CO2 emissions um, and Corsia eligible fuels can only be reported after 2021, meaning in 2022. The deadline to submit such uh, information from um, states to ICAO is 31st of July. Since this information uh, is only about uh, available um, in, uh, the reason why this information is available in 2020 is because, again, the inf uh, it should be about past uh, CO2 emissions that happened in 2021. Then once a, pi um, once a pilot phase from 2021 to 2023, um, emission, inf um, it, it, emission information is reported, all these area uh, information is reported. That's when you can um, you can know the amount to be cancelled. So the cancelled emissions units for the first uh, the, the pilot phase for um, sorry uh, is uh, will be reported in 2025 um, again by the end of July. So you see the information about 2021 is spread out between uh, to be reported by state from 2020. 2020 in 2022 and also in 2025 then um, that which shows you know different reporting areas uh, correspond to a different sort of timeline for states to report to ICAO. For this year uh, 2020 then um, what information should be reported to ICAO? As you see in this table as a Corsia focal point you'll have to report 2019 CO2 emissions data to ICAO by the end of August and the list of air, uh, airplane operators and verification bodies for 2021. You can also submit uh, technically uh, the 2019 data on CO2 eligible fuels, but this is 100% um, optional and purely for information purposes. The data that you, uh, you submit to ICAO regarding CO2 eligible fuels use um, will not be used for any calculation of baseline setting. This is optional um, as, uh, as prescribed in the Annex 16 um, and in the, in the um, resolution, uh, but it's not going to be used for uh, any of the baseline settings. It's more for the information for ICAO Secretariat and also uh, for the you know, wider pu public. Um, so the information and data um, collected through CCR will be sort of used for ICAO to publish documents that support the implementation of Corsia and also for the transparency purposes. So for example, the Corsia Air Permit Operators to State Attribution um, document is, is um, the, the document, it, it's, it's a list of sort of airplane operators and the, and the state to which they are attributed. Um, since we didn't have CCR at the time, um, this was collected through the the web uh, spreadsheet that um, 
thankfully, I think uh, more than 120 states have participated and shared the list of airplane operators. Um, so this information was collected through, uh, through a sort of, you know, a draft CCR or CCR to be uh, spreadsheet and was used um, uh, for ICAO Secretariat to sort of compile and, and publish and sort of have a, already three, a third revision uh, or a third edition uh, to be published in uh, December last year. Um, so this information is used to avoid uh, duplication of reporting or duplication um, or sort of reporting gaps. So um, airplane operators know exactly which state they have to uh, report to and, uh, and um, states for to know which airplane operators are under their sort of um, authority um, or responsibility. So um, uh, these, this document is already uh, available on the ICAO website as well. Um, there are two more documents. Uh, so Corsia 2020 emissions document. Uh, this will include the total um, CO2 emissions um, or a total 2020 CO2 emissions. Uh, this document will be used to determine the first year um, in, uh, when a new entrant joins Corsia um, or a new entrant um, has offsetting requirement. So, and the third document is uh, called the Corsia Annual Sectors Growth Factor. So this is uh, based on the information, CO2 emissions information that is, um, um, that is collected through CCR. ICAO will calculate uh, this uh, sector, sector's growth factor and publish it each year so that states can use this information and calculate um, the individual offsetting requirements um, for individual um, air, uh, air, um, airplane operators that is attributed to that state. Um, ICAO has also published information uh, collected through CCR for transparency purposes. Um, at the moment, out of all this uh, bullets here, uh, the only thing that is is available is list of verification bodies accredited in each state. Um, I believe the fifth um, edition has been uh, already published. Um, uh, to because uh, there is, uh, you know, verification bodies that are coming in uh, or that are uh, newly accredited in states. States report to ICAO um, using the online spreadsheet again, and then ICAO publishes it. Uh, has been publishing it uh, or updating the document um, as much as possible, so that um, airplane operators know which verification bodies they can go to to verify their emissions report. Um, uh, later, when you know, when after a few years, um, total average CO2 emissions for 2019 and 2020 um, aggregated for all airplane operators on each state pair route will be available as well. So um, once all the CO2 emissions is collected or not for 2019 and also 2020, ICAO will be able to do this uh, in 2021 after all the, the information has been submitted to ICAO. Also, there will be total annual CO2 emissions aggregate for all airplane operators on each state pair, um, as well as other information like information and data on CO2 emissions for each airplane operators or these course yeah, eligible fuels claimed and uh, the, the status sort of, of uh, offsetting requirements and um, emissions units canceled at state level and, and also global aggregate level for a specific compliance period. Um, so this document will be a heavy document to be updated uh, with the information that is collected through CCR and, um, uh, and um, you know, gradually incorporating more and more areas uh, listed here. As, uh, as I said before um, earlier, at the moment, uh, we only have verification bodies uh, list in the document because you know that's all the information that we have for now for this uh, this uh, document but as time goes by uh, this document will get heavier and heavier and then the mo will be one of the documents that is um, sort of useful for the people who are outside public who are interested in ccr uh, how how it works and and, and the status of uh, sorry uh, not ccr but course yeah um so um, as mentioned uh, earlier, this two, um, leaflet uh, that is already published and, and is available online is about the CCR, um, the main sort of uh, ideas and how it should work about CCR, um, page six and seven specifically. So if you are, you know, 
like not familiar with it already, um, you can go to IKEA website and then be able to uh, download this uh, freely. There are, as Jane mentioned, there are additional leaflets specific to uh, CCR feature that, uh, that you need to understand um, to sort of upload a list of verification uh, aeroplane operators or verification bodies or the CO2 emissions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is already, the, those four leaflets are, uh, were sent to you last week. So please uh, refer to it when, um, you know, when you have time and then review it. And, and, and also I think it's going to be useful for you for the fourth, um, I think it's called D, um, for you to sort of, you know, be reminded and use it um, when you do an actual sort of testing of CCR in the, in the second segment of, of today's uh, pre-seminar. So let's uh, let's now. I I think I've given you a sort of like really short brief uh, background on how CCR um, or uh, the background on CCR itself. So let's more sort of delve into the implementation side. Um, so CCR has been implemented as a online and user friendly sort of web application um, using a cloud service so that uh, it can be operated uh, for twenty four seven for our IKO states. There are four main features of the CCR. So one is um, that uh, each member state has one CCR account. So multiple users, you know, can be nominated by the state and authorized to use CCR uh, to, to access this account, but each state has only one account um, for that state. Um, the users who are nominated by the state uh, has unique sort of login details, um, username and password, and given access to certain functions of the CCR based on um, predefined list of permissions. So there are two different roles uh, here for the state, uh, course your focal point and state user. I will go more into depth in the later slides. Um, second is that it's, uh, it's a secure web interface so uh, password prote protected and, and the data is kept confidential. Third one is that it's a simple sort of web application to upload and uh, submit information using predefined forms and functionalities. Fourth, another important feature is a traceability, the, um, the traceability and data integrity. So all actions by all CCR users uh, are timestamped and recorded in the web, um, including the electronic signature of the user who initiated the action. So uh, if, in other words, if a user sort of has to make changes um, or, or something like that on CCR, it is timestamped and then logged uh, for, you know, for a reference. Um, uh, if, you know, if user sort of has to change information or delete an information, it may, you know, the user may be able to do so, but uh, the previous version of the information will not be, you know, simply deleted. It will be archived in the CCR for future reference so that, you know, when there's an issue, we can go back to that um, later. You will see this sort of features in the CCR, actual CCR demonstration. So within CCR, there are four different user groups um, that I mentioned sort of sh uh, shortly in the previous slide. Um, there is Corsia Focal Point, and then State User, and ICAO Super User. Um, a Corsia Focal Point CFP here um, is nominated by the state, and um, Corsia Focal Point can upload and change state-specific data and has a responsibility of approving and submitting the information and data to ICAO. Um, State user, on the other hand, is nominated by the Corsia focal point of a given state and has access to functions related uh, related to uploading and changing state for specific data. Um, the difference between state user and Corsia focal point, it is absolutely important for you to understand it. Um, a state user cannot submit information and data to ICAO. It has to be a Corsia focal point. The only person who can do it is a Corsia focal point. Um, there can only uh, there can be only one Corsia focal point per state, um, but there could be multiple state users that that is uh, nominated by the the Corsia focal point to be a state user. Um, 
In addition, the third uh, component here is a KO super user um, like us, uh, who is responsible for the management of information and data in the CCR. We will be the person who checks the submission and also uh, for format correctness and and then um, based on you know when the when the information is uh, collect, uh, collected and everything is correct then we will prepare the uh, Corsia document um, using the information that is submitted through CCR. So in other words for state there are two possible user types or user groups uh, one being Corsia focal point and um, the only person in in uh, per state, and then you know multiple uh, multiple state users, if you wish. Um, it is very important again uh, for you to understand the different um, different roles and authorities between these user groups, especially between Corsia focal point and state user, um, so that you know um, for the other slides and for actual uh, to actually sort of submit information correctly through CCR. Um, information. In CCR, information and data are stored in individual ear record form. Um, so for each of the five reporting areas that I mentioned earlier, remember the table um, that I showed you before? That so um, airplane operators, verification bodies, et cetera, et cetera, um, they're all stored in an individual ear records. Um, they're specific to a reporting ear or a compliance cycle. So for example, here uh, we see a record that says Canada 2019 um, airplane operators here. Um, this, you know, is I think straightforward. It's about the the state Canada. It's about the year 2019 and about the airplane operators that are attributed to the state. So the record in CCR is sort of straightforward. It's it's intuitive for you to understand what this data type is about. Um, so. An easy way to understand this concept is to think of it as a filing cabinet with uh, each drawer here uh, representing one year record uh, of a certain reporting um, area. So at the beginning, your CCR account will be empty. There's no information, no data whatsoever with clean slate like right now. Um, and then starting in 2019, um, you will um, as a course, a focal point, you will fill in a um, three sort of year records um, with information and data for airplane operators and verification bodies and also CO2 emissions. The same apl will apply to 2020 as well, um, and then there as well for the subsequent years. Um, in addition, from 2021 and onwards, state will also report information and data for Corsia eligible fuels. What um, while after uh, the um, the uh, the cancellation um, information will be uh, available after the pilot phase. So to some, from 2020 and 23, um, in the pilot phase, cancelled emissions units will be um, only available, you know, um, after. So this is the same sort of like. Uh, as, as the same table that you've seen before in the previous slide and it's just shown in a different sort of color set uh, and and you know with the with the idea that you like um, you can sort of consider this you can consider the table into a different uh, drawers of a of a, of a or in a cabinet um, so and also please know that although I'm just showing you up to sort of 2023 information, um, this there will be much more drawers of obviously as time goes by uh, up to 2037 when we, you know, uh, when the, um, for the end of, of, of Corsia, for, you know, the, the Corsia design that we know uh, of as of, as of now. So within each year record uh, or drawer, um, they, the information data will be organized in entries. So uh, meaning, for example, uh, for 2019 airplane operators drawer, there will be entries related to specifically uh, about the airplane operator. So uh, information like their names, attribution methods, addresses, et cetera, et cetera, will be sort of um, be there. So as a, as a state with multiple airplane operators, you will have, you know, airplane operator one, two, three, and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. For SEO emissions, uh, it's the same. So 
again, for example, for 2019 emissions, um, an entry will be associated with a specific state pair, meaning uh, from which state to which state, and then the amount of CO2 emissions uh, emitted, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you know, if you have at least like one airplane operator, there will be multiple state pairs that the airplane ha the operator has um, um, operated. So will be multiple entries in one uh, one sort of year record. Um, so another sort of important aspect of the CCR is a status of year record. There are four status available for any year record. So um, the first is in progress here, um, shown here. Uh, the second is complete, the third is ready, and the fourth is locked. It is absolutely crucial for you to understand the difference here. Um, as you can see, you know, important assign here um, for, for you to, to correctly and properly upload um, into the CCR. So first, in progress, um, this is a default state um, or de default status. So when a new year record is created, um, this is the, you know, this is the default state. Um, um, both Corsia focal point and state user um, can add, edit, or in, uh, delete information freely. Once all the, um, so you can just modify as you wish um, for specific entries, any data, any information whatsoever. Um, but once you sort of, once uh, the old information that is needed is uploaded, both Corsia focal point and state user can change the status to complete the next step, sort of. Um, and uh, this is for Corsia Focal Point to review, um, that, you know, the, the, the information is complete, um, so for the Corsia Focal Point to review. So the year record that it was previously uh, marked as in progress um, is, uh, that is under review is, um, is, you know, in a complete status. Um, so when all the information is uploaded and then it just requires Corsia Focal Point to review the information. In this status, a uh, state user cannot modify the information because it's ready, uh, ready for Corsia Focal Point's review. Corsia Focal Point, however, after reviewing the document, uh, after reviewing the information, realizes that there is an error, then, then Corsia Focal Point can revert back to the status uh, as in, in progress so that the state user can edit information. Um, but Corsia Focal Point can still sort of modify the information if they if they know it um, or if she or he or she knows uh, what is the right information and just modify it on uh, his or her own as well. Once uh, the Corsia Focal Point, is, after the Corsia Focal Point reviews and knows that she's or he is con confident there's no revision whatsoever uh, needed, then Corsia Focal Point can summit to ICAO uh, the ear record um, by changing the status to ready. So uh, a year record um, that was previously a complete, um, Corsia Focal Point changes the status to ready, uh, making it impossible for him or her, um, the Corsia Focal Point, to edit the information, but sum it to ICAO. And so then ICAO state users should be the one who has to process this information. So uh, once the ICAO super, uh, super user processes information, checks uh, for format correctness and is satisfied with the result, then ICAO state user can change it, can, and can change the, the status to locked. Um, it's uh, the final sort of fourth uh, layer. Uh, it means information and data is locked to, to conduct calculation or to produce any publications reports. Um, so in both status, Corsia focal point and or uh, state user cannot you cannot um, change the information here because it's read only uh, for them and submitted already submitted to ICAO. Um, however, in case um, a, an error is found, uh, Corsia Focal Point can submit a service request through CCR uh, to release or to release a ready um, document or unlock a locked document back to in progress status. Um, this can be done through, again, uh, a, a fun function called uh, service request in CCR. Um, 
But uh, please note that if calculations is already conducted by ICAO with a locked doc uh, information, say, for example, 2019 and 20 baseline emissions or sector's growth factor, this information will not be, uh, uh, will be sort of the, the new information will not be used to, to revise the calculation. Uh, no adjustment of baseline or uh, calculation will be conducted as per the Annex 16, but will be stored in CCR for reference. Um, uh, last for, uh, but not least, in case the state does not sort of submit emissions report on time as per the Annex 6, uh, 16, um, ICAO sh will fill the data gap by using other available informations. ICAO will put this air record as ready uh, and ICAO data um, to indicate that this year record was not submitted by a state, but was provided by, by ICAO. So again, it is very important for you to understand the different sort of layers of data status or the uh, hierarchy of it, um, and who can modify these records. Again, in progress to complete, ready and locked. For I, Corsia Focal Point, you cannot change information that is ready and locked. You submit information to ICAO by making the status from complete to ready. So I'll cover this information in sequence in the later slides. Uh, so if you sort of uh, understand it correctly here, the later sli slides will be easy for you. So the general process of information and data in the CCR compri uh, comprises four simple steps. So the first is sort of like selecting a specific reporting area. So the meaning the five groups of information and data that I've already covered before, such as airplane operators uh, or verification bodies, CO2 emissions, uh, of course, the eligible fuels and also the canceled emissions units. So you have to select a specific reporting area that you want to report to, so for example, CO2 emissions. And then um, next uh, is you have to determine if there is a specific year record that already exists. If it does not exist, then it is necessary for you to create a new year record. Um, once a new year record is created, the state data status, um, as I mentioned, is um, automatically comes in progress. On the other hand, if the record exists or after the year record has been created, you can modify it by adding, um, by adding um, or editing information uh, and the data. After all the information is uploaded, a state user can change the status to complete um, to to notify to the Corsair Focal Point uh, that you have to review this information. So Corsair Focal Point will review the information and uh, and then validate it, validate the information that is put it as a status, uh, complete status, and then submit this information to ICAO by changing the data status to ready. Again, ready for ICAO to review. Uh, um, and then um, ICAO will review this information and once there's no uh, format to check the format correctness there if there's no error then ICAO will lock the information and use the information to calculate and publish um, ICAO Corsia documents. This is the general sort of reporting process um, for every uh, reporting area that is listed here. Again, um, this is the summary table for you to sort of highlight the different user groups and then corresponding access rights or permissions in the CCR. In the table um, here, you see that um, the, the same user group that I've mentioned earlier exist, and then there's different CCR functions available for, um, for in that uh, sort of like summarized uh, actions that can be done through CCR. So in essence, you will see that both Corsia Focal Point and State User can add, uh, edit, delete information and data on the CCR. However, a creating a year record and also submitting uh, to ICAO can only be done by Corsia Focal Point. State User cannot do these. State User has to, to inform, you know, um, ICAO if uh, uh, Corsair Focal Point, if um, they know that, you know, a, for example, specific year record has to be created, um, they have to wait for the Corsair Focal Point to create so. And then state user can edit based on that information and then make it complete so, so that Corsair Focal Point can submit to ICAO. So ICAO Super User, on the other hand, is, um, is capable of doing both. 
um, and um, obviously not submit to ICAO because it's ICAO, um, but ICAO super user is obviously the only person, uh, only, only user group that, uh, that can publish ICAO for CI documents using the information that is submitted to, um, to, through CCR. So I'll sort of, it's the same information, but I'll walk you through more in more in detail how an uh, information flows in or how data flows in, in CCR. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, the first step is to create a year record. Um, when a year record uh, is created by the Corsia focal point, it, the data status becomes, you know, automatically to in progress. Then, um, so again, this is, can be only done by Corsia focal point. When a near record is created, a state user, a both state user and Corsia focal point can add information, edit information, and uh, delete information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, after a state user reveals that you know every information is there uploaded, uh, it's for Corsia focal points review. Then they can change the status into complete. Um, by changing the status to complete, Corsia focal point will receive an automated email message saying that, you know, this information is, um, the state user has changed the status to complete, please review the information uh, for submission to ICAO or something like that. Um, then, um, so the course of focal point will review the information based on that input and then will determine if, uh, whether there is any revisions needed uh, or not. If there is revisions indeed needed, course of focal point can, can uh, review and just edit the information on its uh, on her or his own, um, but if they feel that you know there is a need for the state user to review uh, and and um, sort of change or update the information, they can change the status back to in progress, uh, which will generate another sort of automatic email notification to the state user. The state user can um, sort of. Um, uh, add and edit in the information and goes back to the same cycle. Um, if there is no revisions needed, um, then the course of focal point can, um, you know, change the status to ready, you know, to, to indicate that or submit the information to ICAO. So by changing the status to ready, course of focal point knows that, you know, there's no error, uh, everything is perfect, so I'm sending uh, or I'm submitting to ICAO. So when a Corsia focal point changes the status to ready, there will be another automatic email uh, message sent to ICAO super user so that ICAO super user knows that there is a um, you know, ready document that he or she has to uh, review. So the uh, ICAO super user will then sort of check the format correctness uh, to figure out whether um, the information is, if, if it's free from errors, and if there is an error, um, the state user will change the status back to in progress. Um, so again, another email notification will be sent to Corsia Focal Point so that Corsia Focal Point can review the information and then uh, sort of go back to the same cycle as here. Um, if there is no error found here, then um, ICAO super user will change the status to locked. So locked for, uh, com uh, for compiling to, to um, calculate using the information or publish the information through uh, as a Corsia document. So when the, uh, this is the sort of like a compilation of everything that I've sort of tried to, to explain to you this, uh, this um, afternoon um, in the, um, and um, it's, it's absolutely sort of crucial for you to understand the steps the same process works for all five uh, reporting areas. Uh, and please note that automated, uh, automated email notification will be sent when there is an action needed from any party. So say when a status has been changed to complete, then it requires the Corsia focal point to take action, as in to review the information, right? If the Corsia focal point is not happy or satisfied with the information that is provided by the state user, if it changes to in progress, this means that the state user has to do an action to go back and add and edit the information, right? So there will be an, an automated email message uh, to facilitate that. When the course of focal point, sort of after the view is co uh, confident that the information is correct, 
um, they submit the the information to ICAO by you by changing the status. Then there will be again an automated message to send to ICAO so that ICAO checks uh, this time um, for format correctness and determine whether the information is indeed uh, feasible to be locked or more information is needed. So or there's something wrong with the information. So uh, it goes, changes back to in progress. If ICAO state user changes to the status to in progress, because uh, you know, of course, your focal point has to update the information. An automatic uh, email will be sent to Corsair focal point for him or her to know that there is action needed from his or her side. So this is a compilation of everything that is sort of presented. It is really important for you to understand this. Um, uh, and you know, um, I'm. I'm I, as far as I know, in the second segment, you will sort of go through this uh, presentation again, specifically for uh, CO2 emissions. Um, so please sort of uh, keep note of that. So, um, so sort of wrapping up, um, I wanted to just highlight a few things, a uh, few important things to remember about the CCR. So. The first is that each uh, Corsia focal point and state user is connected to one ICAO state. Um, and it doesn't, so they do not have access to the information and data that is, um, that is uploaded by any other ICAO state. So as I mentioned earlier, data confidentiality um, is sort of secured through that. Uh, um, all the users are at all the, the state and um, Corsia focal point users will be connected to only one state and you will not be able to see other, you know, or your, inf your the information about your airplane operator, verification bodies, etc., will not be shared to, or CO2 emissions will not be shared to other state, um, other, um, you know, users from other states. Um, also, if uh, an ICAO state does not submit CO2 emissions uh, from airplane operators that is attributed to the state, um, then ICAO as per the Annex 16 Volume 4, will fill the data gap uh, by using available information and calculate the total sec sectoral um, CO2 emissions uh, to, and also the sector's growth factor for a given year. Um, as mentioned earlier in the previous um, table, um, if this happens, hopefully it doesn't happen at all, um, and all the ICAO states summit the CO2 emissions data um, on time to ICAO. But if it doesn't happen, then um, this will be sort of uploaded by ICAO super user um, in the CCR as ready ICAO data. So um, to 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 make sure that you know states know that this is not something that was submitted by the state, but created by ICAO super user or right, by ICAO. Um, last but not least, so please be reminded that the, the status changes or uh, sequences of status. So the first one is in progress, second is complete, third is ready, and fourth is locked. This flow goes, you know, it's, it's really important for you to understand it. Um, again, ICAO st uh, state users, STUs, can only edit or uh, add information in the in-progress status. A complete year record is read-only for a state user, and uh, only the course of focal point can change the status of a year record from complete to in-progress um, if a further editing or revision is needed. Um, uh, ready or locked record is read only for Corsia focal point and state users. Only uh, ICAO super user can change the status ready or locked um, uh, of a, you know uh, at the request of Corsia focal point. So Corsia focal point again can ask ICAO uh, that you know there is an error. So please uh, release the the ready information uh, ready ear record or unlock the locked. Um, year record. Hopefully this ha doesn't happen much, um, but uh, this is to sort of, you know, to take um, sort of consideration of the situations that, you know, they're, you know, everyone is human, you know, you may make some, uh, make some mistakes. So in, in that case, um, that Corsia Focal Point can request ICAO to, you know, change, uh, to make the data state to back to in progress so that further uh, revision can be made. But as I said before, um, if, you know, a locked information is used for calculation, 
we can revert the status to in progress and, and uh, put more information there, but that information will be not, not uh, will, the calculation will not be adjusted to, to accommodate that, uh, the change. Um, uh, finally, I think uh, I'm almost there. Uh, all this information is quite neatly summarized in the Corsia Central Registry Guideline Series um, that uh, that I've mentioned earlier. So four email, uh, four documents has been sent to you uh, last week. Um, in case you need some refreshers, uh, please refer to this guide. Uh, and also, I think personally uh, speaking, I think the first um, Central Registry A um, Quick Guide Series A and D is the most important one. A is absolutely crucial for you to understand it. It's basically the same sort of diagrams that I've used in this presentation. Um, so you can just refer to it if you are not uh, sure of something. Also, if you have any comments or questions regarding this guideline series, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we'll be more than happy to support you about that. Um, so I think that's about it. If you have questions, I see that there are certain questions that is already logged in the chat. Uh, let me try to address you. And if you have further uh, questions or comments, please feel free to use the chat function uh, to leave the questions. So, um, uh, yes, we will send the copies of the slide to you. Um, and uh, there will, oh, sorry uh, that I forgot to mention. Um, today's session is recorded. So this record will be available to you as well with, uh, in addition to the presentation slides. Um, so, okay, in, oh, okay, so um, there's a question um, about whether the system is open to accept any data from airports in addition to airlines. So, um, again, I think I have to go back to the, uh, the previous slides about, okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, I think it's easier if I go. So again, CCR is to CCR is to hmm. okay. <laughs> CCR is to facilitate the information flow between state and ICAO. It's not to facilitate the information flow between state and the airplane operators, nor the air, um, um, air, aerodromes or, or um, airports. Um, air, uh, airports, the emissions covered under Corsia is an airline's CO2 emissions from fuel use. So airports emission is not relevant um, to begin with. But uh, the, even the record, reporting or information flow between airplane operator um, and uh, ICAO uh, state, states between CAA is not for CCR. Uh, CCR is not to design to facilitate that communication. But thank you for that question because there I, I know that there are a couple of others who had this in, uh, who had this question before so I think it's absolutely critical for 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 me to clarify that CCR is not to not designed to facilitate that uh, communication again between airplane operator and the state um, another question is how ICAO data is calculated. I mean, how ICAO will fill the gap based on what data. Um, I, as far as I know, I'm, I'm, um, we are still in discussion. Um, so what kind of data is available for ICAO uh, to use? Um, so this will be further clarified. And I think I'm, I'm pretty sure member states will be notified uh, how ICAO plans to do to fill the data gap um, in the meantime. So at this stage, I, it's not clear, at least for me, uh, what kind of data is available, and you know, um, you know how we can facilitate that. But the uh, secretary is uh, actively working uh, to 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 um, to exactly do that to to you know to know how we will fill the data gap and uh, and inform obviously the member states uh, you know properly. Um, 
another question is, due to the current situation, is there any intention to change the 2020 submission timeline, such as uh, 31st of May and, and 30th of August? Thank you for the question. I know there are a lot of interest in this question and, and there are a lot of, sort of other sort of people who have a similar type of question. Um, this is not something that I think I can give you the answer to. Um, you know, there will be, I know that there are discussions uh, ongoing from different levels. Um, again, this is not something that we can cover for CCR. CCR is built um, regardless of the timeline or regardless of the submission deadline, uh, CCR is developed to fill uh, or fulfill or facilitate the information flow, but uh, it's not something, you know, the, the deadline or how COVID-19 situations and etc. Uh, can be sort of um, addressed uh, in course, in overall course of scheme is not uh, unfortunately the uh, sort of topic that I can cover in, in this uh, webinar. Um, hope uh, that sort of answers your question, but but uh, yeah. Um, if there is any other question, please feel free to to um, use the chat function. I think I've answered uh, that I can, uh, the ones that I can see here. Oh, oh so I see another um, uh, question here. Um, okay, so let's go to this slide um so yes uh another question that i've received is what are the roles of state users and if there uh, is there any limited number of uh, number of state users uh, can be made um and if state user changes or deletes some information can the course of focal point uh, retrieve it so let me um show you the slide about this. So, um, yes, so the, as I mentioned earlier, only one Corsia focal point uh, can be nominated by a state, but there could be multiple state users. There's no limit for state users. So you can just, you know, Corsia focal point can nominate it as much as they feel the need to. Um, if uh, state user changes or deletes information in the CCR, as I mentioned uh, earlier, you know it is all logged in the in the CCR. Um, there is uh, you will see later in the data journal that every action, even simply looking at information in CCR, will be logged there. So, um, you, so sort of you can work on on, on base based on that. Um, thank you for that question. Um, another question I received is, uh, I've signed in to the CCR. Do we have to re-input the in airplane operator information again for 2019? Oh, thank you for the question. That's a really good question. Um, no, you don't have to. Um, the, uh, as Jane mentioned earlier, the CCR that we are using today is for training purposes only. It's not a, an actual CCR that um, to be available for, you know, um, to upload this information. The information that you have uploaded for 2019 and 20 through the uh, online spreadsheet is will be already available in the CCR uh, when the official CCR is launched. I know that for certain states, I think there are certain, some information that is already sort of pre-filled from this online spreadsheet for this training version, but it may not be so for all the states. So, um, but you don't have to worry about that portion, uh, at least. Uh, what you have to do um, using CCR for the first time will be uploading the CO2 emissions information to the CCR for 2019 emissions. Um, any other question? So, um, let me actually log out and then log in again. So, um, so this is the CCR or training version of the CCR that you will um, that you will see. Um, if, as I said, if you don't have access to CCR, if you you know if you 
if you have already you know set the password but then you know um, lost it or whatever you can click forgot password to you know reset the password there will be an automated email uh, to your official email account uh, for you to guide you or instructions with instructions how to reset the password so uh, checking the chat function i think everyone has access to their ccr account which is great um, so let's sort of begin um, so you put your email usernames and passwords um, and then you log into ccr right now here you, and, and then on the left hand side on the top you will see i kill state uh, monaco and my role for today's uh, training is Corsia focal point um, you can check the same information here um, by clicking this test user CCR or like the, the people icon. icon. Um, I have, again, I kill state Monaco, which is, uh, and then ID, the email address associated with it, um, how you can change your password, you know, more uh, information about, about the application and then how uh, to log out. So, um, because I'm a ICAO sort of user, um, I have the option to switch states, uh, but this is not for you. Um, it's only for, for us, ICAO super users, um, but the way that you will see in your screen will be up to sort of log out or the gray uh, area here. Um, here you will, you know, you can edit it as you, as you like, you know, you know, add pictures and things like that. Um, it's sort of straightforward, uh, similar to other web applications. Um, and, um, and, uh, the same sort of user information is available on the left-hand side here as well. Um, so under the user information sort of panel, um, your username, your ID, and then your role. And your state will be here, but also you can sort of view ICAO state and, and access that information here too. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, so I got another yeah, question about CCR. I think it's better for me to address it now. Um, so there was a website, uh, the question reads that there was a website that we could enter approved verification bodies and airplane operators in the past. Is CCR an extension of that website or is it totally a new thing? Thanks for the question. So this is what I sort of try to mention with the online spreadsheet um, in my presentation earlier. Uh, you don't have to, it's, yes, it's a it's sort of a continuation or it's an extension of that website, um, but it's, uh, it's a totally different thing in a sense that it's a new, you know, a complete web application. Earlier, it was just an online Excel sheet or spreadsheet. So the information that you have put it in that online spreadsheet will be available in the report airplane operators or report verification bodies for those years. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, moving forward for, say, by November this year, you have to submit the list of airplane operators and also the list of verification bodies accredited in your state um, for 2021. This has to be done through CCR because, again, um, CCR is now operative or will be operative. Um, we used or we had to rely on that online spreadsheet because there was no CCR at the time. So yes, it's an extension, but at the same time, it's a, sort of a totally a new thing. Um, thank you for that question. So um, coming back to the features of CCR, you see that um, there is ICAO state information um, that, that you can um, plug in. So say you can view like ICAO state um, information, then you'll sort of come here as in this time my state is Monaco you can view by clicking an eye icon here view the state of, uh, state information uh, by clicking the eye icon when you're in here then you will see first is a details tab where the basic information of a state is available so name of the state is monaco it's uh, you know ICAO state code uh, is is not something it's, it's more for ccr purposes and you don't have to worry about it and then there is more information whether it's a uh, SIDS, um, small island developing state, or uh, least developed state, or landlocked developed state. Um, for for Monaco, it's not the case. So there's no um, 
you know, set information for SIDS, L LDC or LDC. Um, state user, uh, users from state or course focal point or state user, they don't have to worry about this because it's not, it's automatically set um, by the system. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, say your system, your country is SIDS, it will be automatically set as SIDS, not, uh, you won't have the option to sort of play around with. Um, the next tab available is CCR users. CCR users uh, is um, sort of connected to the account. So for your sp uh, state specifically, there will be a list of people uh, that has access to the to the account of this of that state will be available here. For Monaco, there is no sort of uh, person that is assigned, so there is no one here. But um, it, if you have say course a focal point and multiple state users, you will be able to see those list here in the actual CCR. The third tab is about Coursia participation. So th again, this is an um, automated uh, thing in CCR. You don't have to worry about it. It's more for you to check. And as you see here, it's an eye icon. That means you can just view it. Um, so let's check. Um, since Mo because Monaco has volunteered to Coursia, it shows um, that, yes, it's a Coursia participation state. Um, and the, it has voluntarily sort of joined Corsia um, and, you know, starting from the onset, so starting from the pilot phase. Um, this, you don't have to worry, you know, it's the same information here. Um, you don't have to worry about it um, if, uh, if there is an official sort of um, official communication from the state that, you know, the state wants to join in Corsia, this will be automatically changed for you, not, you don't have to worry about that. Um, the, the fourth tab is about RTK data. Again, this is something that you don't have to worry about. Um, it's automated uh, for you. So the RTK for two, year 2018 will be available for any state. Um, for Monaco's perspective, uh, there is no RTK, so it's, it, shows a zero and then the percent of global RTK is also zero, but depending on which state you are and how many airplane operators you have, the RTK will be different and also the percentage uh, of that RTK in global uh, international RTK will be different. Um, this again is not something that you have you edit uh, or change or anything like that, it's, it's automated uh, in the CTR, um, but you can check the information by clicking the eye icon or just viewing here. Um, so going back up oh, and ICAO state journal. So this is what I mentioned earlier as in, you know, data traceability and um, data integrity. Uh, all the action is recorded in CTR. Every action related to this is uh, recorded. So um, regarding this, you know, state, uh, ICAO state information, ICAO state journal has, you know, knows that I have viewed this information at on what date, at what time. Um, you know, the username, because there, there could be multiple course, uh, multiple state users and also one course at focal point, it shows which user has accessed what information and when, and what type of action that person has done. So I've only sort of, you know, shown you, so I've only viewed information, so it's only available at view. You'll see the time stamps here. Um, it's really early in the morning in Montreal right now. So you will see that it's like 7, 20, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Um, and uh, you'll see that test user CCR was a Corsia focal point. So depending on who, you know, that person is, there, you, there could be multiple that you, you know here. Um, so all as said, this sort of journal entry is available for every for parts of CTR. So every action is tracked. Um, you will sort of see more in the CO2 emissions as well um, later in this, um, in this pre-seminar. So let's go back to the homepage. You can, um, by the way, you can go back to the homepage like any website by clicking home or even clicking the logo here. Um, then uh, the other information that I wanted to show you is view CCR user profile. So if you click it here, then you come to a sort of user profile list. Um, there is no user profile. Remember that, you know, if when we went to the state, 
profile, there was no user profile available here. Um, that's because there's no user profile that is attached to, to this uh, state. But when there are like, you know, uh, accounts or uh, user uh, profiles that are associated with the state, there will be multiple lines here. Say you have three state user and one course at focal point, you will have four sort of people listed here. And then you may be, uh, as you know, say my name is listed here, I may be able to revise it uh, should, if I want to share that information to the people in, from the same state, say, because the email address, title, phone number, job description, things like that will be, you know, it could be considered as sort of privacy or uh, uh, data. So if you feel, you know, confident that you want to share your phone number, for example, with other, other users from your state, it's not going to be available. It's not going to be visible to any other other users from a different state. It will be only for the the same state uh, users from the same state. So if you are you know confident that it's it's a good idea to share that kind of information, you can edit it here, um, and and you'll be able to see you know others who have have done whether they've done the same thing or if they have shared say for example like their contact details, you'll be able to see it here. Um, so going back to the home page, um, another sort of important feature here is my favorites. Um, you know, you will like, I think for the first few years, you may not be using it too much, but you know, as time goes by, you have so many different year records, say you, so say it's like 2007, 27, you have airplane operators, uh, record year record from 2019 to 2027 and and then there the same goes for verification bodies co2 emissions eligible fuels etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's if it's really difficult for you to navigate and whatnot um, you can just make it my favorite so for example if i want to you know go like if i want to make one um, say report co2 emissions list if this is like the the page that you want that you, you frequently use and you think it's easier for you to make a favorite um, like you know any website you can do so by clicking the star here that and and then you have to add um, you know whatever information that you or the, the name that you want to add like like any you know chrome or explorer or you know um, web browser so say I, I put report CO2 emissions as the name, then let's go back and you will see that report CO2 emissions has been you know, put as my favorite. Um, so it's basically a shortcut. If you, you know, you can create as much as possible, but then, you know, as time goes by, it will be a bit messy. So you can also delete the favorite um, or, you know, shortcuts um, as, as you need. Um, this will come, as, as I mentioned, will have pretty handy at a later stage, but uh, not, probably not too much for the, the first uh, few years. Um, you see from here that it's not, uh, it's, it's a, you know, this is more for the ICAO secretary to know that this is a training version of the CCR and, and not the actual train, uh, actual um, CCR. Um, another feature that you may notice here is that you see a little bubble right next to each reporting areas um, and then numbers associated. So one for here and zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And you will notice that there is you know, one, one here, report airplane operators, zero, report verification bodies, zero here, etc. So this represents the number of year records um, for that state. So for example, if I go to Monaco, um, report airplane operators, there is one, you know, 2020 year record for Monaco. So <clears throat> if you say, if you have 2019 year record, then it will show 2019 and 20 year record. It will show the number there it will show two because there's two year records. So the number here represents the, the again, the number of year records that exist here. Uh, it doesn't matter how many airplane operators are sort of listed or how many entries of airplane operators are in a specific uh, year record. It doesn't matter. It, what it considers is the year 
record, the number of ear records. Um, again, this will come as quite handy. This uh, section here will come quite handy uh, at a later stage when you have multiple ear records everywhere. So say you have about 20 ear records and you want to search for a specific ear out of those ear records, you can search it here by just, you know, putting say 2020, uh, because for now we only have one year record here, then you can search that 2020 year record um, straight, straight. And the same goes for all the other reporting areas. So airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, eligible fuels, canceled emission units, and also the service request. Um, service request uh, will be covered in the later segments, so, so you will know more about it, and, and then you will sort of you know, understand how that function will work later. Um, but again, so this whole system sort of is built on the ear record uh, basis and different entries in the specific ear record, um, you know, um, is not represented in the numbers here, but when you go into that ear record, you will be able to see it uh, more. I don't think there is any airplane operators that is listed for 2020 for Monaco for, for this within this training, um, um, training version. But if you have, say, you're in Canada and you have Air Canada, uh, WestJet, uh, Air Transat and whatnot, different airplane operators that is uh, attributed to your state, you will have that information in the CCR automatically if you have already put it in this online spreadsheet. So the information that you have put in in the online spreadsheet will be available in your account. So the airplane operators um, that you have listed will be there in the actual CCR. In the training version, it may not be so. Um, but uh, in the actual CCR, you should be able to find the um, the list of airplane operators that you, that is already um, uh, that you have already put it in the online spreadsheet. Um, I think oh another sort of important feature of CCR is when you, uh, it's a help uh, feature. So when you have questions about CCR, you can sort of click the question mark here. Um, it's a help sort of um, feature that you, that, that um, it's a predefined kind of questions and answers for areas that may be of interest for the CCR users. So say ICAO state, um, you know, there are like sort of summary of information and property uh, and properties, depending on what uh, the, the help area is, there is different uh, questions available. So say um, report CO2 emissions, you know, ooh, if, if you are not like familiar with the Corsia concept, you may be able to use some information from here. Um, so say the uh, reporting CO2 emissions, um, you know, when uh, the deadline is, is available here, you know, how to report it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the different properties, actions uh, associated with it, they're all available in the, in the help desk or help um, section there. You can click home pay at home here to go to the sort of like a mother of um, help entry list. Um, you know, the, the same sort of list that you can see from the home. But what you can also do is say you have you were for reporting Corsi eligible fuels uh, for Monaco in 2020 and you had some questions or you had like you were, un un you were unclear about specific things. Then you can click help from here, and then we'll show report uh, about the help section, uh, specifically about the reporting CO course eligible fuels. If your question, if the the, uh, the question you had in mind was not specifically about course eligible fuels, but other reporting areas, for example, then you can do and go to a mother again of uh, help um, list by clicking home and then mm -hmm. click, uh, areas. Um, yeah, um, can, uh, so if you have any questions or comments, can you please use the chat function so that I can address it, uh, you know, uh, and, and share it with everyone uh, that is there. Thank you. Um, so let me check if there is anything else that I wanted to cover. Um, oh yeah, so the navigation panel, sorry, I, so I think I have already sort of clicked um, a lot, but uh, the navigation panel here on the left-hand side is, um, you know, 
bro broken down by different reporting areas. Um, and uh, you can sort of, you know, minimize it by clicking the arrow or, you know, uh, make it bigger. Um, this service request is, again, as mentioned earlier, is only available for the Coursera uh, focal point. Um, this uh, Coursera focal point, uh, because state users cannot uh, report to ICAO the service request, this function is only available or visible to you if you are a Coursera focal point. Um, I think that's about it. I think I have spent too much time uh, here. Um, so, I think we have to sort of use the break time now uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, and, and during the break time, um, please sort of log into the CCR and, and try to click uh, around, you know, check the functions that I've already um, explained to you. And um, if you have any questions again, please feel free to use the chat function. Um, so, uh, so that one of the organizers can address your question. Uh, we'll get back at uh, 1.45 at, uh, at your time, I think, uh, 1.45 um, p.m., um, but there will be a, a presentation slide that shows exactly at what time we'll be uh, coming back. Um, um, oh, so another question that has, I have just received, I think it's important to address it. Uh, when and how we'll get our usernames and password for real CCR? I believe the, the username and password will be the same for the real CCR. Um, but, uh, and, and the, the real CCR is not operative at the, at, at the moment. Um, so again, that, that, that may slightly change, but when the real, uh, real CCR is available, there will be notification to all the Corsair focal points to, to, to notify that the, uh, the real version is available. And it, should you need to create another usernames and password, uh, you will be notified as such as well. So um, sort of like stay tuned, but it's not the, it's not the sort of confirmed yet. Um, so as said, uh, sorry to sort of drag too much. Um, uh, please, please uh, take a break, um, you know, stretch your feet uh, and try to, you know, navigate the CCR and come back to us at, at 1.45 p.m. Um, for the second segment of today's session about CO2 emissions and service requests. Thank you so much. <laughs>